What's going on guys, this is Gene Jensen and what I want to do in this video is I want to show you guys how I fish a spook. All right, so what is a walking bait? So it's, it's typically the shape you'll see, the nose will always be a little bit rounded, you'll have a tapering end, has some rattles in it, a couple two or three hooks, and uh, I'll show you two different ones. I've only got 13 fishing ones, but I also fish with me, but I also fish Super Spook Juniors and whatever else I can get my hands on. But I've caught thousands of fish on a, on a Super Spook Junior clear one on uh, Blueback Herring Lakes. But anyway, here's two different types. This one's got a little bit of a spitting bill. This is the uh, the power slide. A little bit big for this time of the year. We're talking about the fall transition, September, October. This is a little big for me. I like to fish a smaller one because the bait seems to be a little bit smaller. But if I have a huge school in front of me and I, I want to weed through the, the little ones, I usually will, will up to a, to a bigger one. But this one spits, but the... The typical thing for a spook or any type of walking bait is you're gonna walk it. You're gonna make it go zigzag back and forth. So you need some specific components, some specific uh, tools in order to do it. And number one is a floating line. This is uh, this is monofilament, 15 pound monofilament. I use mono or braid. Typically with braid, I like 40 pound or 50 pound. The higher the poundage, the less chance you have of getting backlashes. You get fewer backlashes. It has something to do with the diameter and whatever stuff like that and how stiff it is so that's my line choice my reel is almost always a seven three to one in that seven speed um eight seems to be a little bit too fast for me and then i'm fishing on a medium fast rod uh, or a medium heavy moderate but nine, nine, 99 times out of 100 it's going to be a medium fast rod matter of fact this one is called my my spook rod that's the tech that's the the uh the tools that's what i'm using to fish it now one of the things you've got to understand is it is a, a, a technique, there is a difficult technique in walking the bait. And it's only difficult for those who have never tried it and who have only tried it once or twice and get frustrated with it. So I'm going to show you a very basic, very simple way of walking the, the, uh, the spook in this video. And I'm also going to show you some other, other little tricks and techniques that, that I use when I'm trying to catch fish. Let's talk about the where. Where do you fish this thing? Um, it's an open water bait. You got treble hooks. It's not going to go through grass. It's not going to go through brush piles. It's an open water bait. And typically September into October and even into November, you get these blow ups, these schooling fish that blow up and, and chase bait to the surface and, and school on them. A spook is one of the best things to throw at them. Blueback herring lakes, you guys have been doing it all summer long. You've been, you're going to do it through the fall. The only difference between a blueback herring lake and a shad lake or any other lake that has other bait fish is with a blueback herring uh, lake, you're working it a lot faster than you typically would anywhere else. I'll cover that a little bit. Though on the lakes in, in September, I'm looking in the mouths of the creeks, the major creeks that run into the lake I'm looking at those mouths and trying to figure out you know which one has the and which one has the most most bait fish and that's where I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna fish and I'm always gonna have one of these laying off to the side ready to launch when the fish start schooling and I need to catch them now if they're not schooling but they're up on points like these long flat points that's also a time where I'm gonna take a spook, spook and I'm gonna cover water early in the morning you can't beat it um, but like I said it's not one of those that you're gonna fish around grass and around around trees and lay downs and stuff like that you're just gonna get hung up but what I love about this lure is that it's it's a basic topwater lure once you figure out how to walk it oh my gosh you you and, and you get your first blow up and you catch that fish it is so addicting. It's just one of those things where you just can't wait till the fish, especially down here in the south, until the water starts to cool off and the fish start to move up shallow and really start busting them. But like I said, the, in the fall transition, so summertime it gets really, really hot, the water gets hot, the fish push deep, and they don't really blow up that much. But once that water starts to cool off and those days start getting shorter, they move up shallow and they start to feed a whole lot more on the surface. And when you see that, that's when you pull this out. So let's get out on the water. Let's uh, go through the basics on how to fish it and kind of show you some of the, the, the techniques that I use to, to trigger more bites. And we'll go from there. It's not gonna be a very, very long video, so let's have fun. One of the things I do in a kayak, even in a boat or anything else, I always make sure I'm standing up when I'm doing these te this technique. You're, you're making it more difficult for yourself and making it more difficult to set the hook by sitting down in a kayak and fishing it any other way. Okay, so make sure you're standing up, it's the big, big thing. But this is what the type of area that I'm talking about. These flat points, you see that it's real shallow. It's a foot and a half deep right here. Let me just turn the camera just a little bit. 
foot and a half deep and then it drops off into about eight feet of water right there and the bass like to get right up against that drop and push bait up on this flat up on this really really shallow flat so this is one of the type, types of things that I'm looking for, and it's in the mouth of a bay, and it's just a really, really ideal place when they're doing this. Now, I'm a little early in the year to do this. It's usually mid-September. It doesn't start around here in Northern Alabama, but you just throw out, across, out into the deeper water, and I'm gonna work that bait all the way to that drop. And I'm playing around with the speeds. And we'll talk about how to walk it here in just a second as soon as I get it back. But just going to do a, a jerk jerk and a pause. And I like to let it glide out and stuff like that. And I should get bit right there if I'm going to. Right on the edge of that, that uh, bear spot. If I don't, I just reel it back in and make another cast. All right, let's talk about how to walk a spook. The biggest thing when walking a fluke is you got to understand, you want to make it go side to side as far as you possibly can and it the the more you can walk it the more exaggerated the walk is the typically the more bites that i get now there are times where i want to work it really fast and make really soft soft uh, turns and things like that but this is how to do it base this is the basic way to how to do it so i'm gonna cast right out here to the side of the boat now the key is you're doing this as a on a slack line it is a slack line technique and you got to think of it like tapping a drum okay tap and i'm gonna give the line back tap and i'm gonna give the line back when you're tapping a drum tapping a pencil on a desk or anything else you don't want to just hit the drum and hold the drumstick on the drum you want to tap it and pop it back up and that's basically what you're doing you're tapping and you're popping your rod back towards the bait and the better you do that the more side to side action you get okay and that's kind of the way it is now i'm gonna make a little short cast i'm gonna show you guys again it's a lot easier to do this on a longer cast but it's tap, tap, and you're just pulling the line tight and instantly going straight back to a slack line, okay? Now, when I'm fishing blueback herring lakes, which there's a few of them in the, in, in the southeast and around the country, thanks to striper fishermen, you're really working it super fast. I mean, as fast as you can possibly work it so you don't get that super side-to-side -side action, but blueback herring typically are work are ch running away from bass really, really fast. They're a fast fish, and they're in open water and whole nine yards. Okay, so shad lakes, any other kind of lake, any other kind of pond or anything else, I like a little pop, pop, pause, man. They just pop. Get it going and then pause. Get it going and pause. Get it going and pause. And you can play around with your length of pause and see how what it takes to trigger the fish. But typically in the, in the fall, you can you only have to pause it for a split second. One thing that I don't want to miss is, is miss talking about is the type of hook set. So the one drawback to having braided line or having having monofilament line is the stretch. You lose a lot of power in your hook set especially in this really, really long cast, which you do a lot of with a spook. So if I'm fishing monofilament, I try as much as I can to avoid making a long cast unless they're schooling and I've got to get to them and they're a long ways away. I try to avoid that. But with the hook set, your tendency when you see a bass blow up on your bait is to set the hook right away. And it's one of the hardest things to keep yourself from doing. But once you get it down, you don't miss very many fish. But you see them blow up and you, and you pause for a second. So you see a blow up and you go one, 1,000, two, 1,000. And on three, I start to pull tight. I don't jerk it like a jig. It's more of a sweep or it's a set off to the over my right shoulder, or over my opposite shoulder from what, rod, what hand is holding the rod. And I don't hammer it home. I just let those treble hooks do their work. So the biggest thing is, is don't jerk it right away. Count to three. And on, the, on three is when you start to pull tight. And nine times out of 10, those fish have it good and you're not gonna miss them. Or they hadn't, didn't get it at all and it's already floated up to the top and you start to work it again. Now, if that happens, if they miss the bait, don't just stop it and let it sit there. Work it a little bit faster. And a nine times out of 10, well, 50% of the time, they will come out, come back and they'll hit it or another one that's in that school will hit it. So don't give up if they miss it the first time. Keep working it, speed it up a little bit and give it a quick pause and then speed it up again and they'll hit it again. I'm gonna run around a little bit and see if I can't catch a fish on it. This is also a good bait to work the bank. As long as there's not a whole lot of cover on the bank, you work these bare banks like the one out in front of me around the outside edge of the of the, the grass, the bank grass. You just work it around and you know, when you're not getting a whole lot of blow ups or they're not out in the middle of the lake schooling out off these points, 
a lot of times a small little walking bait or a popper you can work the edges of these things and get wrecked all day long even on sunny days like today they'll get when the water temperature's right they'll get real super shallow up against these banks and it can be absolutely a blast to fish this time of the year that way I'm gonna keep working it around a little bit, see if I can't get bit. My hopes are not up, but we'll see. All right, so if you got a bait like this dual pitch that really has a lot of side-to-side -side action, I mean, it's designed to have a really big side-to-side -side action. Say, for instance, I want it to slide up underneath a dock or up underneath the overhang. It's a really cool technique to that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it going, and then every time it turns to the right, I'm gonna let it slide a little bit more, and I'm gonna do a really quick jerk to the left and back over to the right and let it slide so a longer slide to the right moves it to the right longer slide to the left moves it to the left so i'm gonna work it back and go pause 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 and i turn that bait in under shade and under boat docks and stuff like that There's a little bluegill bluegill following it right now but uh just slide it up underneath it by doing a longer pause a longer pause to the to one side than you do the other and you can turn these and like i said the ones that like this dual pitch and any other one that slide that tur that turns really really sharp is really good at doing that and you can slide one right up underneath the bow dock and absolutely get wrecked if i don't get bit on this flat point right here there's they're just not on a spook right now well, typically this time of the year early spring early september uh even through late september uh this technique is really good early in the morning as there's a lot of shade on the water but once the sun comes up it becomes pretty darn difficult unless you got a lot of wind um they just aren't that active aren't that aren't pushing up that high now further into late september into october and into no through november this will be really good all day long as they get up cold up shallow in that cooler water but right now we're still looking at high 80 water temperatures and they just don't come up in the middle of the day and strike it like they will later on but these are these videos aren't for right now they're for to get you ready for the fall transition so if i don't catch one it's just part of it i guess i'd love to though all right so one of the things i forgot to cover is how i hold my rod which is really critical so a lot of people will put their finger right here on the trigger right not me i'm gonna run that trigger right behind that ring finger and i do this with everything but the difference in that and when i'm walking is i'll place my finger right here on the rod and so I'm typically, nine times out of 10, I'm using the strength of that finger to work the rod so it doesn't wear out my arm and my wrist and stuff like that. Well, like I said, I didn't expect to catch a fish on a spook. Not this late in the day, not this time of the, you know, this early in the, in the fall. It's a typically an early morning bite, but I hope you guys learned how to fish it. I hope you guys pick something up from this video. Man, I, it's good to be back. It's been a, it's been a rough year for me. Uh, I kind of keep all my personal stuff private, but, uh, but I'm glad to be back, glad to be filming again full time and absolutely loving life. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, but like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water. Go ahead and catch the fish and have a great day. We'll see you.